little interview here actually with DVS1 um, where he talks to a place called Sync. Um, it's an Amazon dance event at Spaces and he has a little interview here. So let's hear what he has to say in general. And this might give us an, an inkling into some of his thinking about the lineup and why he decided to shift to play at Panorama Bar in fucking Bergheim. Maybe this might give us an insight and maybe not. Who knows? Let's see what he has to say. How is ADE treating you, they said? It's uh, really busy. A lot of people to meet, a lot of things that I uh, signed up for. It's good. <laughs> How was your panel? I was really good. I was a part of two panels, one with Dave Clark specifically talking about this project that I started called Ace Life. Big up Dave Clark as well. Absolute menace on Facebook, always calling out the mad shit. Bit of a mad guy himself, but I love that guy. Big up Dave Clark. Bit Dave Clark gang, protect Dave Clark at all cost. And then I sat in on a second panel with some of the collection societies, uh, some music lawyers, and some various people kind of in the industry to talk about the bigger problem of royalties and collections. Tell us about Slice. A Slice, sorry. It's like a slice of the pie. I started working on this right after the pandemic started when obviously I had no gigs and I had time, saw a problem. And because I come from a kind of place where we fix our own problems, mm. I decided to find a solution for it. Brought in some advice from people in the industry to really try to isolate the solution. And then I hired a crew, worked on it for about a year and a half. We did a private beta for six months. Now we're in a public beta for about just over six months. And uh, we're just growing every day. Yes. How does A-Slice work? This is geared for DJs who make money playing other people's music. It's not meant for the bedroom DJ or for the DJ maybe playing at a house party who's making... Ouch. DV Swan, you have, you have to just um, reduce my fucking existence to that. Ouch. <laughs> no money. This is somebody like me who earns my living playing other people's music. So the goal was, how could we get money to the producers whose music we play? So we made it very simple because 95% of touring DJs are playing digital media. It takes two seconds to extract the playlist from what I played last night or last week. And then I can put that in the A-Slice program, choose how much money I want to give, and then the city I played, the venue I played, the country, upload it to our system. And we, we built this machine learning technology that matches the producer and the track to the correct person and that i'd love to see the scale of djs that actually do that because obviously it's a, it's a voluntary system right you have to kind of want to do it yourself but i'd love to see the scale and i bet you any money the the rich the, the richer ones the one that the one the one percent ones the ones that are playing like in places and they're getting like a hundred grand minimum right i bet you they're the ones that aren't actually on there i bet you any money it's actually the quote-unquote working class djs who are the ones who are probably uploading their sets and their playlists onto that fucking program voluntarily themselves and giving whatever little that they get, you know, equivalent little to comparative little to what their other more successful peers get um, to their uh, other, you know, to other producers so that they can share the fucking pie. I bet you, I bet you the working class DJs contribute way more than the actual ones who should be giving way more, who are the ones that are getting 100,000 per set. I bet you any money. But of course, you know, revealing that kind of information behind the scenes isn't probably necessary and isn't going to probably do any good for your app that you're doing. But I bet you that's the case. Validates it. And then we put that money that that DJ gave, we split it across all the tracks equally. And then we put the money in that producer's account. And what we do is Amazing. if you're not in our system, when you reach a certain dollar amount, that you would be eligible to get paid. We find you on Instagram, on social media, on Facebook, and we tell you, you have money waiting for you. You just have to register and validate yourself. So th that's pretty cool, isn't it? That's fucking pretty cool. Imagine being some, you know, some random producer somewhere who has no idea your tune is blowing up, you know, and it's getting played all over the place. And because there's a lot of tunes that get played all over the place that aren't necessarily popping on social either. Maybe because DJs don't want to be letting other people know about the tune ID and stuff, but you're uploading onto that fucking service. And then somebody reaches out to you and you got a DM in your fucking mentions. No, you got a DM in your in the folder that you don't really check or whatever it may be and you're like oh shit you got some money waiting for you even if it's fucking a hundred dollars that's a hundred dollars that you didn't have yesterday so it's fucking sick i love it this differently than collection societies a producer doesn't have to register their music they don't have to do anything they just have to hope that the dj who's playing their music is honest and generous enough to realize that they should give something back the amount of dj's pay is hidden Yes, yeah, so everything is anonymous in the sense that we never wanted to create any top 10 or top 100. We wanted the <laughs> smallest DJ to feel as important as the biggest DJ. So whether you give $10 or whether you give $1,000, ultimately you look the same in your level of importance to the producer who's... Mm, 
you probably have to gamify a little bit of it, right? To be a really successful app, you probably have to have a portion of the app where people can really quote unquote compete to see who gets higher up on the list, right? Maybe you make you make altruism a competition. It's a bit grim. It sounds a bit gross, I know. But really, if you actually want, because the end goal should always be the presiding, this, it should always be the thing that make, yeah, the end goal should always be the most important thing. The most important thing is to get money into the pockets of producers who are not necessarily getting the gigs that these DJs are getting, but they're having their music played in these places, right? And obviously get that portion of the pie that usually goes all the way to DJs and to clubs and split it equally with the producers of the tracks. Cool. If that's the case, figure out how, as best way as possible to get more of that money into their pockets. And I think part of it would be to gamify it and make, you know, and have a leaderboard where people can see, yeah, this person's contribute, maybe not an exact dollar amount, but maybe a rounded up amount about, hey, you've contributed, you contributed this much, you did this much. That'd actually be a good thing. And it would, actually, it would actually be a cool thing for fans to see also that maybe a DJ that they love and support they might love them even more because they find out oh hey they're contributing way over the fucking market value for whatever track that's been uploaded on there i think that might be a good thing overall but again it gets a bit yucky very quickly who's receiving that because more importantly they're getting a notification that you played their music and then secondly they're earning some money for it but in their accounting it shows as an anonymous amount so ultimately you're not judging anyone mm. for how much they can give or how much they can support you the fact that they're supporting you is already the most important thing you can give as little as ten dollars you could give as much as you want so really this is accessible to anyone who makes even just a little bit maybe they're just starting to dj then maybe they only got paid 200 euros they can already afford to use this and it's not restrictive the max i've been ever paid to dj must have been 160 euros or maybe not one 160 pounds actually that's been the max i've ever been paid actually and that was at that weird hostel i went to where they said they wanted house music but what they really wanted was fucking atmospheric you know chill out sort of like kind of music house and all i had was you know fucking adonis house and shit right <laughs> mr fingers and it was absolute catastrophe i felt so bad taking their money but it is what it is they should have gave me better instructions beforehand i probably should have asked more questions but it is what it is really we built it so that the smallest dj can use it and the biggest dj can use it it's been good. I mean, we're not hiring PR companies. We're not hiring uh, people to sell this for us. What we're really doing is we're letting this grow organically. I so like we this. as a company reached out to around 600 to 800 artists before we launched and we invited them to see a demonstration to hear the story of why we're doing this the reality is that we're growing about 25 percent every month nice. with new people coming new producers new djs playlist submissions so if we continue at this rate it should be really good that's pretty cool that's pretty cool and i like the little smile that he made so clearly it might even get to a point where he might actually start to Maybe that's the reason why he's doing the fucking house gigs then. Maybe the dependence on his gigs isn't as, like, the having gigs isn't the main thing that's maybe, you know, uh, making him money, that's covering his fucking nut. Maybe now he's going to a place where he's doing something that he feels like has a bigger purpose than just standing behind a booth and playing music, although that's great. I'm, I'm assuming at his point in his career, you know, you've probably seen and done everything. And maybe you think that, you know, the writing's on the wall when you see the fucking Sarah Landry types and stuff and whatnot, right? Maybe you're like, you know what? Maybe I should make more space for her to do her thing and I should do this other thing I'm doing. So that might be the reason. Maybe the reason isn't Sarah Landry. The reason might just be the fact that this whole project, A Slice, is actually going places and he's thinking, you know what? If I actually focus on this a bit more and take less techno bookings and do the old house set here and there, I'll be in a better place. Who knows? That might be the reason. I might have figured it out on live on the go. No, because what we do is actually very different than them. And we're not trying to replace them. We're trying... Oh, oh, because it, what we do it, at this rate, it should be really good. Uh, any trouble with collection societies? No, because what we do is actually very different than them. And we're not trying to replace them. We're trying to collaborate with them because the problem that collection societies... Collection societies will not replace us. Collection societies will not replace us. ...have is that they have their established ways of collecting information, but it doesn't work. 
And unfortunately, it's not in a lot of venues. They're, they're using black box technology to listen, to record, but they're in less than 1% of venues in the world. So the problem is that they're only seeing a very small example of the actual music that's being played. Mm. So we're already in talks with Yuma Stemmer here in Holland, with the Canadian Collection Society, with uh, Australian one, with PRS in London, and we're working on finding ways to share the information that we have with them so that they can do their job on a better level than they're doing it now. We're just a, a solution cool. in between and then a potential additional solution for what they already do. Tell us about your gigs. So tonight I'm playing by myself at Into the Woods, closing one of the stages, and then Sunday I'm actually brought a bag of records and I'm playing an all vinyl set with Lady Machine because she only plays vinyl, so I brought my records and it's the first time we've actually played together. I that's a fucking good set, isn't it? Lady Machine in fucking DVS1. Hmm. I love that. I know her vibe. She knows my vibe. And our goal is to try to find the perfect place in the middle where we both just don't have to think and just feel off each other. Any music projects coming? I wish I could say that I've been working on music, but the last two years, really, I've been full-time working on A Slice. There's ah, I think I figured it out, mate. That might be the reason why he's pivoting away to fucking house because I think, although... I think you probably around the world you'd imagine techno guys probably no i don't think that's true though because you think of all the big house DJs who are smashing it now at the moment i was gonna say maybe techno guys work schedule or like gig schedule is maybe more relentless than house people i don't think so i just think at the top anyway you can you know the top is the top it is what it is the the schedule and the fucking you know the demands on you in terms of where you have to be booking wise are a bit crazy but maybe if you purposely decide to switch with genres it does take you off some maybe booking lists and stuff maybe people recommendations aren't necessarily the same so maybe it kind of by default slows down pace wise the amount of bookings that you get because you switch genres that might be the case um but who knows because I remember the last person I think about that did that was maybe Dixon, isn't it? When you purposely, when you got voted, you know, DJ of the year a few times in a row, you decided to only start doing like 100 gigs a year or something, right? Or maybe even less than that. And you know, it sounds still a lot, but, you know, before that, I think you're probably doing double. So maybe that's a purposeful thing that you do. No, maybe it's a decision that you make intentionally to switch genres and you hope the consequence of that is that some people quote unquote lose your number because you're not you know playing that music anymore so they get somewhere else to fill your slot that might be the reason there's music that i'm gonna come back to soon i'm hoping in the next six months i'll be able to come back to being artist zach but for now i've had to be business zach and that requires my full-time attention so it's almost like i'm working two full-time jobs right now outside of my full-time djing i'm full-time running this a slice project but i'm still djing every weekend i'm still getting to be creative and uh, at some point soon i'll come back to my producer side in my creative side and last word thank you for having me don't overdo it at ade <laughs> madness big up him don't overdo it. ade is funny because of that fucking viral video clip of that guy near the canal going absolutely crazy um, i'm not too sure if that's real or if that's maybe a skit or if it was even filmed this year who knows but i remember seeing that on my timeline thinking oh my god bro that guy is going through it all the way through it and also